One question I struggle to answer is about identity. What is your identity, Sophia? It's not that I necessarily not know what my identity is, but it's a little bit harder for me to define it. I constantly feel like people want a clear-cut answer when in reality it isn't. I was born in Muktashu, Somalia and came to the United States of America on August 18, 1997. In Somalia, I'm every inch American. My walk, talk, and dress all reeks of America. When I speak my native tongue, I am a bozer. My accent is so thick, at times my grandparents don't understand me. Nevertheless, in America, I am an immigrant. My lack of accent makes people assume that I was born here. I eat and breathe America. However, until recently, I wasn't even a citizen. I now have a piece of people to piece of paper that declares me as one. Then we we would conclude, come to the conclusion that I'm Somali American. But then I would disagree. Starting from kindergarten to fifth grade, I went to a predominantly African-American charter school. I learned about Sojourner Truth way before I learned about George Washington. I learned about the Civil Rights Movement way before the Civil War. I memorized the Black National Anthem, lift every voice and sing, then the actual National Anthem, Star Single Banner. I would say that I'm Black. The people I learned about look just like me. It appears that my skull mirrored my appearance except for the simple fact that I have a scarf on my head. And I knew it wasn't culture that separated us, but religion. So, could I not identify myself with them? If I would have my choice of box to check off, I would choose. Blacks slash Somali American. Then some would say, isn't that the same as black slash African American? No. Because being African American is defined as being from an African descent. I am not African descent, but African. The complication does not stop there. My family dynamic is beyond difficult to explain and still today I'm trying to figure out my place. So the story goes like this. Once upon a time, a long time ago, my 16-year-old mother met my father, who wasn't much older than her. She was so taken by him that she thought she was in love. Love conquers all, right? They ran away together and got married. At the time in Somalia, this surprisingly was a common thing. But my grandfather was appalled, enraged, and disappointed. My mother's side of the family was working middle class and they could afford education for my mother. My mother was supposed my mother was considered fortunate because she didn't have to choose marriage in order to survive. To make some matters worse, she was at the top of her class. She was only supposed to choose marriage and there was no other option to choose from. After a year, my mother and father came back with a kid in tow, my older brother. Every fair son must come to them. This one did when my mother wanted out of this marriage. She decided that being black and blue wasn't a fitting color. My biological father was abusive and my mother wasn't having any more. Sadly, a woman can't divorce her husband if there's a possibility of her being pregnant. And she was pregnant with me. So here's a divorced 18 year old with two kids. What is she going to do? Since Somalis are a collective society, the elders came together to fix the situation. The elders deliberated and came up with a solution that my older mother was not happy about. They thought it would be best if my older brother stayed with my father and that I should stay with my mother. Problem solved, right? Nope, not exactly. On a bigger scale, the Somali, at the time Somalia was going through a civil war. Since the 1990s, many innocent people have been victims in this war and are still are today. The result of the civil wars have been starvation, chaos, and feuds between tribes. And all the Somalis have immigrated to the United States for a fresh start. And my family did too. As my mother sought to escape her husband, we looked to escape the civil war. Coming to America is a very difficult process. There are numerous ways to coming here, but one way is through a lottery. Luckily for me, I was able to secure a spot on this ticket to a better world, except for one person, my mother. My grandmother took custody of me and raised me as her own. She was the only mother I knew until I was 18. 
She was considered Hoya, so my word for caregiver, and the only Hoya that I needed. I knew I had a mother who gave birth to me, but it didn't matter. I didn't want to give up the comfort and familiarity of my grandmother. So, out of choice, I did not want to get to know my biological parents. While my grandmother was raising me, my biological mother remarried and had more children. I met these siblings of mine in the spring of my sophomore year in high school. I automatically became the oldest of four strangers. In late 2013, my biological mother finally came to the United States with an additional two children in tow. When she arrived, she gave birth to my youngest, my youngest sibling. Ironically, her birthday is three days after mine. So look at this. Her oldest daughter, who migrated to her oldest daughter, who was the first to migrate to the United States, and her youngest daughter being the first national born American. Isn't that something? My immigrant story has shaped my identity, and I continue to figure out who I am and where I belong to the people around me.